to The Pew, the special edition. The Pew, how are you? <laughs> We're in Wilton Manors, Florida at the Stonewall National Museum Gallery for Michael Fizakerly's Nightbirds exhibition. Behind us, you can see his photographs. Uh, you can see my mannequins that have the club kid clothes on them. The exhibition is absolutely stunning and breathtaking. I was so uh, overwhelmed by the beauty of it. And, uh, you know, over the years, I of course, I've seen your photographs. When I worked at Project X, we would get photographs there that you would contribute to us. I would see your photographs in the offices of the limelight because they were used for nightclub invitations. Mm -hmm. But to just see so many next to each other is um, monumental. Even to me, as I edited it, it was the same way, you know, as I pulled them out and started going through them. That's why it got so big. It kept growing because I had to, I, there were so many things I wanted to include. So the first thing I guess I wanted to ask you is when I was coming to Florida, I was asking myself, you know, how did I even meet you? Because my first memory of you is going to your uh, apartment where you had your studio dressed and in, in the chicken suit with Michael Alec when right. shot a photograph of us. And I don't know if that's the first time I ever met you. Is that how we met? Probably, because I wasn't involved in this scene that much. Yeah, um, uh, Michael and a few of us uh, did Pansy Beat uh, magazine, uh, fanzine, uh, that's now into a book. But um, Michael actually knew Michael you're talking about Michael Alley. Michael, Michael Economy actually knew Michael Alley because he um, was a window dresser when he first moved to New York, and Michael was a window dresser, and, and he assisted him at some point. Michael might not like him. Oh, okay. Him, but that's how he knew You heard him. it here first. Michael Alec started out in New York as a window dresser. He, he, did, <laughs> he freelanced as a window dresser with my friend Michael, and they knew each other from that, but we also knew his, his success, so we wanted to interview him for Pansy Beach. And um, so we, and yes, you came over. We did a spread with him for for Pansy Beach, like about five pages. And you came over dressed as Clara the Chicken. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so here is the photograph, the uh, the any, iconic any, Clara yeah. the Chicken and Michael. <laughs> yes, you know, obviously Clara was the mascot of Disco 2000. There were actually three mascots, but the other two just right. kind of fell on the wayside. She was and, the first one. Yeah, the only one that really took off was Clara, probably because I did it. And I think her costume was real fresh, as as because we know it got real <laughs> dingy later. But um, no, she was amazing. I think it was a centerfold. Actually, we used that as a centerfold in the magazine at the time. You know, you're as far as I know, you're the only photographer in New York that actually took all these studio portraits of the club kids. Uh, you know, a lot of us would come over to your house before Disco 2000, before mm -hmm. we got messy and drunk. So, I mean, how did you how did you start working for the limelight? Well, it was actually Michael who, after I did the shoot with him for Pansy Beat, um, he liked what he saw, and we were talking, and I actually lived a block and a half from Limelight, and uh, he said, do you want to do some projects? And we almost immediately started the Club Kid Collectible green, uh, baseball cards, and um, it just grew from there, you know, and, and like you said, he would, he would send 10 or 12 people over to my apartment on a... Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday night. No, what? That was on Wednesday. Wednesday nights. And um, they'd clump up my stairs, my neighbors would laugh and, and, and scream, and, uh, and you'd run in, you'd get gorgeous pictures, and you'd run out. Um, studio, you know, I'm not a good paparazzi photographer. I did it, but I was never really good at it. I mean, I had some mentors. I mean, I worked for Scooboola for many years. I was working for Scooboola at that point as a stylist, photo stylist, and a personal shopper for him and his, his lover. But um, that was my thing, and I liked the cleanness of that. Yeah, well, they are very clean, and I mean, you made you made it look so professional, even though you live in this little, little tiny apartment, four hundred square foot, and the living room basically was the studio. It was. <laughs> I mean, it's really making do with what you have. And you know, the lighting was perfect because the the ceilings, were, everything was white and white seamless on the background, and my floors were blonde, were blonde, and it was like a light, a light box in there. And because uh, none of these pictures are really retouched, it's pre retouching and all that stuff. It's pre digital. It's film and negatives. So and yet everybody looks so good. It's all about that beauty light. <laughs> <laughs> it's really amazing. Uh, the other thing, you know, one of the things that um, you mentioned the uh, club kid card, so I wanted to ask you about that. I sure. Mean, you f did all those photographs. I mean, it must have been like 40 photographs. No, we did 50. more. We did two series because there was the second set that was blue. with. Right. But and then we, did, we started to do I'm a paper set. I'm talking about the first set. Yeah. Because the, that first set has just become this iconic. Oh yeah, set. absolutely. Um, so what do you think about that? Like, because now there's wallpaper of it in that Chinese restaurant. It was like a full page spread. Are they the still open? I don't know if they're still open, uh, but there was that full I loved page it. spread. I loved it when I saw it, but, but you know, I did go to them and approach them, but it, it worked out fine, actually. Um, I was actually honored to see them do it. And um, 
Uh, what do you think of the fact that those? I think it's great. I mean, first so of all, popular. you know, Michael was a Michael is was a genius. You know, he you know some of the stuff is that he was doing as as um, in the in the earlier days, and he had the opportunity to do that with the clothes behind him and the money behind him. You know, because I mean, not I worked with a lot of other promoters, and they didn't have the money to do those kind of things. You know, and uh, or to pay someone like myself to come in, because I would if I if I didn't set up in, at my home, I would often come to the club. Instead of a, a white seamless somewhere in the chapel or in the front area, uh, I did it at the tunnel for other things. And uh, so it, you know, it, it was all over the place. And now a word from our sponsor. All right, so I'm at Michael Fazakerly's exhibition at the Stonewall National Museum Gallery in Wilton Manors, Florida. The exhibition just opened yesterday. It's absolutely breathtaking. Behind me, you can see the photographs that Michael took. A lot of uh, what he shot was in black and white because the publications that he worked for at that time wanted black and white photographs. I know that, for example, our uh, publication, Project X magazine, of which there are two covers over there, uh, we published mostly in black and white for the first couple of years. And then Homo Extra, the other uh, big gay magazine that he shot for, also was black and white. So uh, the nightclub invitations were color, and you can see some color further back. But we're just going to walk along here slowly. Uh, the exhibition documents the club kids, the drag queens, and the go-go boys who were active in the early 1990s in the uh, nightclub scene in New York. A lot of them worked at the Limelight, uh, but also others worked at the other big clubs in New York City. You have to remember that there were a lot of big mega clubs in New York City at that time, and uh, a lot of very flamboyant people were employed in these clubs, either as go-go dancers or as party hosts, which is what I did at these clubs. And I also um, was Claire the Carefree Chicken, so that was my uh, go-go game. So I guess I was a host and a go-go dancer, although I never got to show my body the way some of these hot guys did. I was always covered in yellow fake fur. <laughs> so over here you can see the color section, which is beautiful in itself. Uh, I wish he had shot more color because it really is stunning when you look at it. Uh, and then over here the museum asked to borrow four of my club kit outfits, so you can see uh, four of my creations from that time period. Uh, I don't think most of them would fit me at this point because I was emaciated back then, but uh, this is something, this outfit is a costume that both Michael, Alec, and I wore at different times. There's a photograph of me wearing it that uh, Michael took, uh, Michael Fazakerly that is. Um, here is another one of my outfits, uh, like a faux Pucci print spandex with vinyl and chains. This one was worn by Moses Ramatsky. And, um, over here, uh, you have the Technicolor jumpsuit overalls that I wore at the Outlaw Party at the now Highline Park, probably around 1991. There's a picture in my book, uh, Dressing the Monster, of me and Michael Alex serving liquor at an Outlaw Party, and uh, he's holding a bottle of vodka, and I am serving a cup or something, and wearing this jumper. So it, this exhibition is going to be up until January 20th. It's in, at the Stonewall National Museum Gallery in Wilton Manors. You've got to come see it. It runs through January 20th. Welcome back to the Pew. We're still at the Stonewall National Museum Gallery. So could you just tell people what is the Stonewall National Museum Gallery? Uh, Stonewall is one of like maybe I'd say 12 or 15 in the United States. Uh, not, uh, not affiliated with each other, but of, of um, gay uh, history museums. I know there's one in Los Angeles and, and San Francisco and Chicago and other cities. And uh, Wilton Manors uh, is actually considered a gay neighborhood like West Hollywood was, like, uh, like Greenwich Village was earlier on. And um, it's, it's a great place for it. You know, it's a nice little strolling area and people come in here. It actually started in New York because we're affiliated with a library and an archive that's been around for 50 years of one of the largest collections in the United States of, of gay and lesbian history. That's books, movies, films, artwork, things like that. And that's actually another location here. And, um, 
And the museum has been around for about 10 years, but five in this new location. And it's just growing because the community is very supportive of it. Well, it's absolutely beautiful. And you know, even the uh, permanent collection materials are great. Uh, I wanted to bring it back to your work. Uh, here is, um, this is a photograph that you took of Michael for an invitation, or actually it was a calendar it was a that was an invitation, right? It was something I wanted to do. I actually had done another calendar um, called All Hail the Queen, and Michael saw it and he loved it. It was, it was 12 drag queens. And he said, let's do one for Limelight and let's make it a giveaway for New Year's Eve. And I think they literally threw them off the balcony, <laughs> okay? And I think we maybe made a thousand. It said it on the back of them, a thousand of them, which wasn't a whole lot. But um, we did 12 different club kids, uh, performers, people, and they each got featured on each month. And uh, it was fun. It was exciting. The, uh, you know, he really was good at coming up with these gimmicks, uh, for, you know, for club invites. And, yes. Uh, from little booklets to Absolutely. calendars to trading cards to Absolutely. bubble gum boxes, candy boxes. And not everything is necessarily new, but it, it's it's revisited and, and done in the way you think that it works. Yeah, it's really fun. You know, one of the things that I that made me so happy about your exhibition is that a lot of times people, uh, you know, whether it's a photographer or an artist, uh, like a painter or a drawer, uh, they do, they have a whole career doing this kind of work and it ne doesn't necessarily get a lot of public attention. Mm -hmm. And then they, it, and it doesn't get into an institution where it's uh, celebrated for its uh, you know, unique vision. And uh, so I was really happy to see this exhibition open, you know, that you're, you're still alive and you're getting to see your work recognized for you know, its beauty. Uh, you know, how do you feel about that? Uh, it's exciting. I mean, I, I worked on it um, over the years because I did walk away from photography around 95. For, for about 15, 12 years or so. And um, I, I approached the museum cause, because I enjoyed it. I actually brought them a picture of Quentin Crisp and Kenny and Kenny because um, they were showing um, Naked Civil Servant here one night. We, okay. do, we do movie nights here. And uh, I brought it in. I guess it was like a little ploy to just meet them as well. And uh, they loved it and we, I told them about my work. And funny enough, the, um, the assistant director, Emery, um, he actually said, I had Pansy Beat in, in Scranton, Pennsylvania. And I said, we only made like 1,200 of each. He said, I had, I had one or two of them back then. Here is a copy of Pansy Beats. The original Pansy Beat, that's actually the very first copy of Pansy Beat. We did five fanzines uh, in, in a year and a half. And then, and then a book was recently be reprinted of it uh, last year. So Emery knew your work and... Uh, and then I, I made, the, well, that was in conversation, and then I made an appointment. I literally took my um, portfolio, which I still have, all original stuff that I printed myself years ago, and tear sheets and it club invites and stuff like that. And I took it down there, and um, they were very happy. Chris, the director, had actually only just come on board, uh, and he was excited about it. And uh, they said, "We need to do a show for you." And uh, I said, I, I, "I'd love that." You know, my main intention actually was to go there was to make a provision to actually leave my archives to some place that I know that they would be recognized and, and, and live on beyond. And I'm fine with that. I, I am making plans to do that at some point. Well, you know, it's very, like, for me, it's very exciting that, you know, you're leaving uh, your work to a museum that, like, all, that me and all my friends are going to be part of LGBTQ history. It's a perfect marriage, actually, because when they saw the pictures, they were like, you have all of us. And, and there are some, there are plenty of straight people in some of the pictures and lots of girls from the club kids scene and some straight boys and token bi boys, whatever, you know, but... It represents a really good, and it's a genre that they don't see because a lot of times history, like it just really became history technically because it takes 25 years right. for something to be considered history. And some of this stuff goes back 30 years. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what's next? So, one thing I wanted to ask you, you know, this is a gallery, so sometimes people, when people think of galleries, they think that the work is for sale. So can people buy your photographs? Um, we, yeah, we have a, a sign and I, we talked about it. The museum here themselves, um, they haven't really done it. Maybe it's because it's, it's new and they don't have the provision to do it because it is small and it is a not-for-profit. And um, they do a lot of activism for the community as well, besides running this, this organization here as a museum and, and, and a library and archive. So they do a lot of activation, uh, activism for the LGBTQ community down here. Aside from that, so uh, yes, prints can be ordered. I actually numbered a lot of the prints uh, that, that if anyone wanted them, and I listed my email address if somebody wanted to contact me. 
All right, so Michael Fazakerly, the uh, photographer who shot so many iconic photographs of uh, New York City nightclub personalities in the early 1990s. His exhibit will be up until January 20th. You've got to come see it if you're in Southern Florida. Thanks for talking to us. See you later. Thank you. <laughs>